Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's cryptocurrencies update, patience and the big picture. That is what it is all about, in my humble opinion. Don't chase the scribbles, chase the big routes. Those are where the real money is. And let's go over some charts, including the new ones, the Lunas, the Matrix, the Avalanches, and all that stuff and what I found so far. Please remember, those are quite new currencies. So edit waving them, so to say, can sometimes be a little bit limited and challenging. So I'm going to provide a little bit first of a bigger picture. And then eventually, I'm going to dig into the uh, shorter term picture. Um, please remember and uh, please um, appreciate, I would say, the background uh, for my current situation. That is, of course, that my wife's family is in the Ukraine, so we are uh, diligently monitoring the situation, so to say, and in contact with them. So if you have relatives there as well, um, I, I wish you um, them all the best and I hope all goes well. I fully understand your situation. And if you don't, please understand my situation that trying to also do this with that going on, it's not easy. Uh, anyway, uh, that's uh, not an excuse. It is an explanation of the current family situation we're in. Um, that's maybe the price you pay when you uh, marry a beautiful Russian slash Ukrainian lady. Anyway, please always remember we always want to know exactly what's next. Well, that's not going to happen. And I can't reiterate that enough. And this is not to wash my hands in innocence. This is simply the, the environment we're dealing in when we are dabbling in financial assets, stocks, cryptos, gold, silver, commodities as oil. I don't know what you want to invest in bonds. You'll never get any certainty, period. Now, if we then go through a large correction, that uncertainty even becomes less because corrections are so inherently variable. Right? Price can pretty much go track back in time and it will still do something correctly. Um, there can be overlaps, no overlaps. It's all fine within a correction. So please, please um, bear with me, literally, because we are in bear markets in my humble opinion. And eventually we'll get through it and then good times will be ahead. And honestly, if you think this was bad, uh, just wait what's going to be around the corner, okay? This is nothing yet. So you ain't seen nothing yet, pretty much. So we continue to anticipate, we continue to monitor, and we continue to adjust. Uh, please remember the February 11 update. I clearly laid out two paths, and as you know, those two paths are being filled in by the market. We just didn't know which of those two paths it was. Back then, February 11, it's right there. I was saying we can either do five waves up, one, two, three, four, and five, or three, A, B, and C. What did we get? Three. What do three waves mean? Continued uncertainty, continued crap, pretty much, if you want to say it's politically incorrect. And that's what we got. And back on February 11, I said we can easily revisit the lows. This trend line, we can easily revisit it. It's nothing yet out of the ordinary has happened. This has come to fruition. I simply didn't know if we would get five waves higher or three. Five waves higher would have been my dream because it makes life so much easier than we would get the five, three, five type of pattern. Now we can get a whatever the markets decides to do pattern. It's not my fault. That's simply the way it is. But forewarned is forearmed and you were forewarned. All right, so that, that's simply all there is to it. Uh, again, this is a market of many uncertainties and that's simply what we're dealing with. A correction since November and the correction will probably last a long time. I'm still waiting for the B wave bounce if it's underway or not. I have no clear signs yet, 41,400, please. That'd be great. Um, it seems like we hammered in a nice bottom so far. It looks like three waves lower, A, B, C to be determined because we can easily turn that into one, two, three, four, five. It is simply a matter of the information that's going to become available over the next hours, days, uh, and weeks for the market to decide what path it's going to take. I can't yet delineate the difference, but what I do know is here it is 40,425. All right, so I'm going to do uh, update that number, 41,425. If we go above it, then chances really increase from current levels 
that we will move higher and not lower for that green wave five. Why? Because four and one are not allowed to overlap. One was at 41, 4, 26 or 25, somewhere around there. Okay, but uh, first things first, 40,000, right? We're still at 40,000. It's so critical. We busted above it and we're now busted below it. Whipsawed, that is why I continue to say, if you want to trade this, please, please trade it small and please, please have tight stops because um, this is not an environment as we've had for many, uh, many, many, many months before the November top. So this is simply where we are, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, and then a five. I'm fine with it. I couldn't care less either way. That, that is something else. Um, or we do this ABC. That's still the pattern we're stuck in, and this is going to be the questions we're probably going to ask ourselves for a long time to come until things clear up. And I wish it cleared up. I truly wish it made my life easier. Um, I wouldn't lose <laughs> so many members because most people get confused um, and they cannot comprehend the fact that we're stuck between two options. So that is just the way it is. You know, uh, losers leave, uh, winners stick with it. That is discipline. Uh, remember the 10,000 hour rule. It takes 10,000 hours to get good at something. I tweeted it a, a couple of days ago. 10,000 hours. Uh, that's the time it takes to get good at it. It is pretty much scientifically proven. If you have a 40 hour work week, and you work 50 hours, 50 weeks per year, only two weeks off, it takes you five years to get good at something that's complex. And markets are very complex. So you wanna get good at this or trading, it will take you full-time trading, 50 weeks at 40 hours a week for five years. So don't expect to jump into this market and make boatloads of money just like that. It is not possible. It's not going to happen. Most likely will do the opposite. And you will look at all the greatest, okay, all the goats, right? All the goats, as they call it, um, the greatest um, of all times in sports. They just didn't wake up one day, fell off the couch and, and became world champions. Look at the, the current Olympics we've had. Most feel there can only be one winner, right? And uh, it's so sad because all of them pretty much put in the same amount of effort and time and you become fourth. Even if you become second, you will most likely be forgotten. It's the same with who knows the last person who went to the moon. Who knows? We all know the first one, Armstrong. We don't know who's the last one. Nobody knows, fortunately. But the last one is equally important as the first one. Um, you know, case in point is that we're currently stuck here, and it's going to take a while for this to um Resolve itself and stick with it. That's just the way it is. Don't just give up and say, oh, I'm going to come back to it later. You won't come back to it later. You know where you will come back to it later if you do that? Here. I see it time and again. You'll come back here and we'll leave here. It's fantastic. It's phenomenal. <laughs> I honestly, I almost have to laugh about it because that, that is human nature uh, if we give uh, up, right? If we stick with it, keep on analyzing, keep on chucking at it and then from a trading perspective this is honestly maybe a good period to just sit on your hands just sit on your hands let it unfold unfold study listen learn it's fantastic become better at it master it uh, all those things it will only help you once the real bull market gets going okay once things bottom you only get better at it that's that's the whole point if you just say oh, i'm going to step out of it i'll get back to it you learn nothing and you will uh, repeat the same mistake over and over again and again that's not what i'm here for i want to have this win-win situation what's winning for you and winning for me and um you know I'm only limited to what I can do. I'm not the almighty knowing a God here, so to say, not at all far from it. I'm just trying to simply use two types of market analytical tools, Elliott Wave and technical analysis to come to the most likely conclusion. And, and that's it. Um, and then we'll have to simply see how this is gonna unfold because look at this price section, right? Since April last year, this is almost a year of down, up, down. It's essentially a nothing, right? This is nothing. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is indeed already cycle four. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. ABC, ABC, and now five ways lower. Uh, I can kind of make it fit, but I just wanted to show you this is a year almost of nothing, right? But you had some good rallies to go, and this is where I mean you should focus not on these short terms, but on the intermediate to, to long terms, a couple of weeks, a couple of months. That's that's where the real uh, gain is. And if we zoom out for two years, you can really see the difference, right? So this is from March 
2020 to March 2021. Great times. And now we go from March 2021 to March this year. Not so good times. That's the difference. That is really the difference. And where did most people enter? Here. Where did most people exit? Here. They should have done the exact opposite. All right. And with my work, you can pretty much almost do the exact opposite. But just wanted to show you, this is, everybody here is a winner. It's easy peasy. But to get ready for this, you need to get through this. You can't reach the top unless you start at the bottom. It's just the way it is. Yeah, you can say, oh, you know, I'm going to do a helicopter drop. I'm just going to get dropped. And no, it's it's not the way it works. I'm really trying to help you. I'll be your coach. I'll be your manager. I'll be your trainer. Um, I'll be your cop. I'll be your boxing clubs. I'll be your mouth guard. But you still have to fight Mike Tyson. In the end, you, you still have to fight Mike Tyson. Um, I really don't, <laughs> so to say. But I try to help you to the best of my knowledge. And if you still struggle, uh, let me know. But again, I think it's a good time to sit on your hands and be ready and be prepared for what's gonna come next. And you'll be the first to know when that is going to happen. And right now we're still a little bit uncertain and that's just the way it is. I can't change it. And you'll be the first to know if that uncertainty changes. So that's a long story, but I just really wanna make sure that remember again, the market environment we're in. Are we in a market environment like this? for a year, just rising prices, just buy the dips, or are we in a market environment that we're currently in that is essentially flat to down? Because honestly, the last year has been down. This is not a good uh, price action. Look where we were here in uh, in March, let's say late February, we were here, and where we are now is here. And compare that where we were here and there, right? Th th this is a bull, this is honestly a bear. Uh, that's just the way we have to look at it. But that doesn't mean we have to throw in the towel, as I said. This is where we uh, can actually sit in cash. Cash is one of the safest positions to be in, honestly, uh, during um, any correction or, or bear market. And it allows us to have no worries, no stress, and, and really uh, become better at uh, both long-term investing and shorter-term trading. That said, look at the trend as your friend. It's still not great. Uh, we, we continue to have these whipsaws. And there's no trend change yet. We really need to get substantially above the 50 day. I really want to see price above the 200 day. If it's not going to get above the 200 day, um, that's really what I think of it. Buy, I'm not interested. 200 day, that's it. That's the key level now to watch. 50 day has filled me utterly, so I'm not going to use it. I bet you 200 day as well is going to feel utterly. But from a trend change perspective, that's what I'm looking for. Then the traffic light is fully green. It's trying, but I haven't seen anything yet that says to me, this is great. So with that, you know, if you zoom out, then the bigger picture still remains um, quite reasonably the same. This is uh, one way to look at it. It's a little bit different than um, this picture here where we had, um, oh, let me change that here for you, where we have the A, the a wave here is summer last year. We have the B wave here in the fall from last year. And of course, the, the current C wave should then be uh, finishing soon, if not, if not already, right? Something like that. So that should be that one, okay? Something like that. That is certainly possible. Wouldn't surprise me. Then cycle five, all-time highs. And similarly, B wave will go to 50, 60,000 and we'll know soon enough then what's the case. So this is the B wave bounce. Um, that is uh, this shorter term version, right? And then cycle five or already going to start cycle five. Undecided just yet. Let's have a look. Again, I haven't even seen a, a multi-week uh, bounce, so to say, that will show up in the monthly chart. The monthly chart here shows 2018. 2018 was a zigzag with one up month, two up months. We haven't seen an up month yet. Doesn't have to happen, but therewith I cannot delineate with, do we have a B wave yet? I, I don't see it. Uh, back then here, that was a cycle two, and in my own opinion, we're in cycle four. We should see at least two up months, and that hasn't happened uh, yet. Also, I wanted to point out here that in this cycle two wave, the C wave was not as long as the A wave. It tends to happen quite often. Um, so we have to uh, really watch carefully um, over the next couple of days, weeks, and months how this is all going to develop. But this is still my preferred path, that we were lower, higher, and lower back to about uh, the current level here of around 30,000. So I think long-term, we're at some very strong uh, support levels at around 30,000, maybe 25, but that would be the spring lows of last year. 
they should hold and then off to the races into the six digits. That remains my bigger picture. Alternatively, um, we already topped here for cycle three, as I showed you with the alternative cycle three. And this was A, and then this is B, and we're now in wave C, and then off to the races. So those are the simply two paths I'm tracking, right? Very, very honest, uh, simple two doors, A and B. And eventually the market will tell us if we start busting through 60,000, then I'm really starting to incline that we're going to go to the 100,000 plus. Here is Binance Coin. Also here, let's zoom out the bigger picture, uh, the corrective um, price action on the shorter term remains uh, inconclusive, I would say, and confusing. So I still haven't seen a, a B wave bounce, haven't even seen a bounce, nothing. Why? Because on the monthly chart, I haven't seen an up month. I, I don't see one. Every correction has at least an up month. On this frame, sure, it really has. Um, we had it here uh, in uh, major two. There was an up month here. It's still hard to see because this is, of course, um, a very high prices. So the low prices don't show very well. And I haven't seen one yet. So that really suggests to me, I would, at the minimum, please have a bounce. <laughs> Maybe we don't get it. Maybe we had wave A here, wave B, wave C. Same alternative. Um, let me put that on the map for you here. So you kind of see my uh, thinking. So this is alternative, right? Because we're interpreting the price action to the best of our knowledge. We've studied all the books, um, but then that still doesn't guarantee we're correct. So then we have to always assume that, well, you know what? What we originally thought was this might be this. And that's a good way to go about. And then this was then wave B. And this was then is then going to be wave C. And that is still um, a fourth wave flow. Again, if we can get here, that'd be fantastic. Then we should still get wave five. Bottom line is I'm still looking for a multi-month rally to new all-time highs. I don't think we'll have a bear market unless we drop below 205. That remains the same. So Binance Coin, I think, is still doing well. It's just a short-term, messy price action we're in uh, that is just very hard to exactly um, label as we are in this corrective pattern where ABCs are tagged on to other ABCs where we can have overlap. Um, and I think therefore, shorter term, it it's, should be avoided and better to look at the bigger picture. Ethereum, nonetheless, about talking about the shorter term, let's look at the long term of a, uh, the short term anyway. We're still in this target zone box. Yes, we dropped all the way to support at 23.15 once again, as I warned on February 11th. Um, that's two weeks ago, that Friday, that we would be able to go that low once again for this B wave because we have three waves higher and then the market simply reversed the right to do essentially whatever it wants to do. Um, we're still, though, in this target zone on a closing basis. And I prefer to use closing basis uh, and not so much look at these stabs lower. I know they're pretty scary. Uh, but once again, we recovered pretty well. We need to get back above resistance, 27.50. Back above resistance would be great. That would be step one, okay? Uh, then we need to get back above, I would say, 3,065. That would be step two. And then we need to get buff, back above the B wave. So if we can get above these levels here, there, this is critical. So I'm going to paint those orange, those are critical to watch, then we have certainty for this. I know one can say, well, then you miss all this path here. Yeah, yes, one does, but it increases the certainty for this. So I still prefer to look higher on Ethereum. And it's simply a matter of how is this exactly going to fill itself in. So I'm going to actually put this at 2300. That looks like a little bit better support now. And this is simply the short term variation of corrective price action, and it will be almost getting only worse when we are in the correction of a correction, okay? So this one shows as well, three, four, and then we're three, A, B, C for four, and then off to the races. Trending, trending wise, how are we doing trending wise? It's still 100% bearish, right? So really back above the 50 day, please, back above the cloud, please, back above the 200 day, please. Uh, then we have a much stronger trend, but for now it is not yet trending higher. If we can get back above the 50 in the cloud, I'll take it. I'm gonna do the same for Bitcoin, back above the cloud, 
I'll take it. That'd be fantastic because we've been below the cloud for a long time. If we can back up, get back above it, great. If we then also get back above the 200 day, even better, absolutely better from a trend perspective, right? So here we are on the weekly chart and same here, it's been very corrective overlapping. Yes, we could have topped already for the B wave and now wave C. It's not my preferred point of view. I prefer to see it um, again like this. And, and then this would be wave A. Okay, this would then be wave B there. And then we get wave C. And then this B wave in black, the major B wave is then something like a irregular flat B wave. Utterly tricky, wouldn't surprise me if that is the case. And can go as high there as, this would not surprise me either. If we can get there, that'd be great. And then we plunge one more time. Sure, why not? All right, Avalanche, AVEX. I have price data since October 2020. Just looking at down months, I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven moves higher. I don't have an impulse yet. So the question then is, is this um, eight? And can we get nine? There is some overlap that I don't really like too much, but we also um, have to be cognizant of the fact that this little month here is a little odd. So this could already be five waves higher. So I'll zoom in eventually on the price action next week to um, get a better idea on where exactly uh, Avalanche is. But I prefer to get nine waves higher and then this could become a diagonal on a very big uh, time frame. Something, oops, like uh, this. And where that diagonal then is in the bigger picture, that is something to um, figure out. But diagonals are either leading or ending. So this could then be, if we're gonna get the diagonal, wave one or wave five. It's one of the two. You pick, I, I don't know, that's gonna be a, a educated guess, but we all know if this is a wave one or a wave five, that um, let's say the diagonal starts here. So we're just gonna, Think a little bit outside the box. And this wave two, if this is a wave two, no, we're not going to print anything. What? Why would I want to put there? This wave two should then bottom somewhere here. And if this is a, um, a cycle wave, that is for the wave five, then we should go back here, that's the difference, okay? So those are the two, two differences. I don't know yet, don't know yet. So I prefer this, there was, this would be nice. The blue line is what I prefer, but there's no way of telling yet, right? This is looking around many, many, many corners. So please keep that in mind. It kind of starts to look diagonally, as I said, but I have too little price information. So just thinking out loud of what to kind of expect. Uh, we do have some overlaps here with these tops. So it wouldn't surprise me if this is um, already a wave five top, though the RSI five suggests we should see higher prices. So let's um, zoom in next week like I did here with Luna. Luna has a little bit more price information available. And then the first question always is, what is the price action before the important low? Every stock and cryptocurrency often makes an important low at some point, and then it starts rallying. So then the question is, what is the price action before the important low? So here is the interpretation of a one slash three or a two slash four. Don't know. Nobody can tell you which it is. Eventually we will be right. Then I simply look at the down ones, one, two, one, two, three, four. I have no overlap, I like it, and a subdividing wave um, five of three. One, two, one, two, three, four, three, four. Should move higher for wave five, a big correction, and then wave five here. 
for a larger top, either three or all of five. To be determined, don't know yet. If this is uh, three, then we go back here for four and then another five. And if, if it's five, we're going to go back to almost whatever low level it is. But that is still so far away, it was fraught with so much uncertainty. Let's just focus on this path. Let's first focus on this path, then this path, and then this path. There is too much uncertainty about this whole path, okay? I can't look around that many corners in time and place. It's impossible that we're asking the impossible from me. So anybody who asks about it, <laughs> you will be ill-treated. Anyway, um, this is so far looking reasonably well. I like this uh, also from a technical indicator perspective on like third of a third wave, um, reasonably fine with this one. I like it. Moving on to uh, Polygon or Matic. Um, there I have also here the question, what is the August and fall of 2020 low? One, two or three, four? I don't know, I can't tell you. Then we have nice and clear one, two, three, four, and then a ending diagonal wave five of either wave three or a wave four. So I'll tell you very easy, the difference, if we do a wave four, we should kind of, please note these are all log skills, right? So I just, then we get a wave four and then we get a wave five. That is the difference. So I'm just, and if this is a cycle wave, so this should be, uh, then we go all the way down. So we should get a little bit like this. This is the, that way, or are we gonna go like this? I on, I can't tell you the difference. That is really the difference. So we really have to diligently monitor it. And this was then a nice diagonal. Please remember, this is log scale, diagonal fifth wave. And it, it really counts very nicely on this chart using monthly closing prices. Down ones are corrective. Nine out of 10 times it works. Look at this, the third of the third wave typically has the highest strength. So I prefer this path. The blue path is preferred, okay? And then we have to see how this wave four here kind of um, fills itself in. Don't know yet. This was a about one month, two months, two and a half months long correction. So it seems like this might need a little bit more time. And how much can we expect? Right? How much can we expect from such a correction? Well, we're already doing pretty good. All right, we already have retraced 62% of this entire rally that started in November of last year. So that should be plenty. Again, a fourth wave here should bottom at around the low of the previous fourth wave. And that means we have some nice support here, of course. And about, oh, sorry, it was again the wrong, uh, somewhere around there. I like it, wouldn't surprise me, eight cents or 80 cents. But that, the blue path is the preferred path. Let's look at Ripple. Ripple is still not breaking below its July lows. So we can still be in a, this corrective wave two pattern. We had a large A, a large B, and then this wave C. Okay, I haven't done Fibonacci relationships between A, B, and C, but this still looks quite corrective, still looks like an impulse to the upside. Since the July highs, one, two, three, four, five, it really looks like it. And then a very deep wave too. And now we need to break back above 90 cents to really start ideally wave, oh, that should not be wave C, wave three or wave C. So there. That remains the question, but I start to like uh, Ripple a little bit more than I did a couple of weeks ago or even months ago when I kind of dropped it. So this starts to look a little bit more constructive. Okay, so we should now be able to move higher. And here, this is, I think, a very nice cutoff level. And then we, of course, um, this level here. So somewhere around 90 cents. We get back above that one. I think it's going to look uh, pretty good. And then let's do some uh, some fit math. There you go. So then the first target would be somewhere around there. That would be the first target. 
Okay, something like that. The question then is, are we going to get five waves up? I'm just using standard uh, FIPS. Doesn't have to be that way. We'll simply have to follow along. And this should then be one A. Something like that. And then this should be, hopefully, two Okay, I know it's been a very long story, but there's a lot of ground to cover, uh, especially with the fact that we have these new cryptocurrencies on our hands. So as you can see, there's uh, quite some uncertainty based on the initial setup of these um, cryptocurrencies going back in time on what exactly are those one and two or three and four. We objectively cannot determine that. I have no way of knowing, so we would have to label both accordingly. I prefer um, always the more bullish path, but <laughs> that's just me. Um, Ethereum and Bitcoin are still in this uh, quite messy price action. In my humble opinion, in a larger B wave, that remains my preferred point of view until proven. Otherwise, um, it is still following along uh, reasonably well with what I forecasted it would do February 11th, door A and B. Door A was five waves up or door B three waves up. We got the three waves up and then we knew that the drop could revisit the January lows. We knew it and that has certainly happened in um, Bitcoin and Ethereum got um, maybe not as far. Or actually it did equally far. Sorry about that. Equally far as well. So something, um, this should not be a surprise, but um, some things are simply unknown until we really get the resolution in that, okay, we only did get three waves up. Then we know this is going to happen. And that happened. I would have really liked to see Ethereum bottom here. It didn't. So we still need to see bigger picture wise, at least a counter trend rally that will show up on a weekly chart, a monthly chart with some up candle. And I don't have that yet. The trends remain still uh, bearish. That's for sure. Uh, still some uncertainty on how exactly um, this entire correction is going to unfold. Did we already top in the spring of 2021 for a larger third wave, or was it the fall of 2021 as a larger third wave? Uh, it's all fine, nice and dandy, so to say, eventually after three comes four and after four comes five. So I think the bottom line is we simply continue to be in an uncertain market environment uh, where the trend is predominantly down, and we're going to watch and wait for the uptrend to start, be it either as a bounce or a rally to new all-time highs. Either way, we're going to look higher and we'll know soon enough. And unfortunately, we'll be stuck in this. Just as I showed you, I think this is one of the best charts we have from February, March 2020 to February, March 2021, uptrend pull. Since then, uncertainty. It's been a year of frustration, right, so to say. Um, from that perspective on trying to really interpret what exactly is going to on. Honestly, this looks more like a bull flag, if anything else, than um, than a bear market, I, I would say. I Meaning a bull flag of eventually this whole sideways consolidation is over. We simply had a very high level consolidation between 30,000 and, and 70,000 or 65,000, whatever the level was. And after that, consolidation will move higher. Remember, this is then a about year and a half long sideways consolidation, maybe not even just a year, uh, whereas we've pretty much had a bull trend since uh, 2018, so three years of rally and then a year of consolidation. It's not out of the ordinary. So with that, I think I've uh, said enough. Uh, I have no summary slides. I just really wanted to show you the, wh where we are and the different doors we're dealing with, uh, that we're still in corrections and corrections are not easy to interpret. We'll have to let this um, run its course. And hopefully we'll get some higher prices. Again, February 11th update, I can't say it often enough, is doing its trick. We knew after three waves up, expect a quite unpredictable move lower that ideally should target some of the zones, but can revisit the January lows. It's just a certain market environment we're in. Uh, I wish it was different and I, I can't help you with that one, but I can tell you, as I said before, uh, please use this time to to become you know even more educated, more diligent, uh, sit on your hands, uh, don't chase anything, 
because before you know it, we're back to where we came from. And uh, until that changes, until we see some nice strong trends, um, I, I advise caution on all of these um, cryptos. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being a valid premium member. If you have any questions, please let me know. I know it might not be the easiest of updates, uh, but again, it's simply a uncertain market environment. We're not in this trend here. We're in this trend and that's uncertainty. So please uh, take that into consideration as always understand the market environment you're in and then you can trade and understand it accordingly and much better and more safely. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Take care. Trade safe. See you all on Monday. Bye.